Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Tech. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different, which is something I've been saying in a lot of videos, I think. So take that as however you'll take it. Today we're talking about sound, particularly um, trying to record in a more vintage or old fashioned sounding way. And I'm going to showcase a few different methods for that. Um, I'm not a sound guy, so that's you know big disclosure there. Don't expect me to be a, a sound, sound engineer or have all the right phraseology or whatnot, but there's just a few things that I've encountered. And you probably see the lighting is a bit goofy in this spot. Just the way it's set up, the lighting's going to be strange, but that's okay. So to start with, what do I use for my normal videos? The sound quality that you're used to, or lack of quality, in most of my videos. Well, I don't use the built-in camera microphone system, I use an Audio-Technica. Let me take that off and show it to you. So here is the end of a lavalier mic. This is a wired lavalier mic. Um, basically it's a microphone that you clip to your shirt. I mean, they're used also all over the place. And here's the body of the unit. Let's see if the camera will actually look at it correctly. This is an Audio-Technica Omni ATR3350. It uses a little, um, basically a hearing aid battery inside of here to give it a little bit of power. This, as far as I understand it, and it would make the most sense, is a condenser microphone. There's a few different kinds of microphones. There's condensers, there's dynamic, and then ribbons are a kind of dynamic and whatnot. They all have different characteristics. You can look into more intelligent people than me on that. But this is what a modern little lavalier microphone sounds like going into this um, Canon HD something 600. I'll, I'll put it in the video, you, whatever camera I'm using. So, normal sound. Well, what if you're looking to create something a little more old fashioned? One option is to go for something retro. An example of that is this. This is the Shure 5B carbon double button microphone. This particular microphone was sometime from sometime in the 30s. This is old tech, and by the time the 30s were rolling around, in the late 30s, it was already sort of old technology. So let's take a closer look at it. So as you can see, it is suspended in a ring by uh, a series of springs to try to create some isolation. So if there's any vibrations or whatnot, it won't uh, affect the recording too badly. And there's a logo and whatnot on the back. We have a plug here for one side, a plug for another side, and then the grounding wire. The way a carbon microphone works, particularly a double button carbon microphone, and I will Put a, I'm sure I have a few images that I'll be able to put up in the video, kind of showing a diagram. But more or less, in between these, these two halves, you can imagine a diaphragm. So a, a thin uh, sheet of something, some material that will vibrate when you put sound towards it. On each side there is a button. And in those, those buttons, those capsules, is carbon. So you know, carbon granules. When a charge runs through them, they can act as, you know, more or less a resistor that, uh, that varies depending on how compacted they are. So, if you have a button on each side and then the diaphragm, when the, it begins to vibrate due to the sound, on the side where the carbon is compressed more, the resistance will drop, and on the side where the carbon um, is less compressed, the resistance will increase. And it is that uh, system that allows the sound to be converted into electrical signal. There are single button carbon microphones, which more or less survived into the 70s, 80s, and probably even 90s in um, older um, telephone systems. In your old rotary phones, they're probably using a form of a carbon microphone. 
And it's the same idea, but only with one button, one side to take in the signal. And that's how they work. And they were one of the main microphones in the uh, you know, early recording uh, industry in the 20s and whatnot. And I have a number of old records that were electrically recorded, probably with microphones just like this. The pluses of a carbon microphone, and which is why they still even exist today in communication-specific uh, applications like uh, military um, comms and, and whatnot, handheld communication devices, because they're very reliable. They just keep going. Downsides. Their frequency response, while it's, it's right around where the human voice goes, and I'll, I'll probably put those, that, those numbers up, um, which is great for communication, it's not the best for high fidelity or getting a really wide range of sound. Um, and they tend, especially in these older versions, they tend to have a lot of, you know, there's a hiss to them. Now, with a modern, um, you know, system, well, with just having a nice uh, audio system, a preamplifier, uh, interface unit, um, there's lots of ways you can mitigate hiss. I don't have all those. So you're going to hear kind of worst case scenario. Now, where did I get this thing? Well, you can find these on eBay, but they're probably not known if they're working. They're probably awfully expensive. And you won't be able to get them to, even if they were functional, you're going to be missing a ma massive piece of the puzzle. And that is a power supply. These things take a power supply of one form or another um, to work. And you can't just use something called phantom power, which is a setting on most preamplifiers and most uh, things for modern microphones. It's not the right power level. It doesn't work. You need something like this. And this is actually a modern product. This one is built by CVRSE designed for carbon microphones. This fellow, he, he also refurbished this and sold it to me. Um, he hand built this. This is, not, this is not, not just a big company building this. This is the guy um, who uh, is, I guess you could say, an enthusiast of older recording. And he needs something like this. This takes four C cell batteries. Let's go in the back here. Uh, nothing too fancy in there, just a battery holder. What it does is, is it provides power, and it will actually tell you how much power is going to each button, because uh, they sometimes vary. I'm going to show you how to get the microphone ready for recording, because um, as it sits, you'll probably, the carbon will actually settle. So you need to kind of loosen that up, get it ready to go. But you need something like this. So you have an XLR out going to your audio equipment. It's a three pin plug. It's been around for a while. And the microphone connects through a quarter inch jack. So it's a very pretty unit. The ring was made by the same fellow who made the power supply. I'm um, the guy at CVRSE. And so were the springs. This unit came in excellent shape. I and mean, it's clearly, you know, it's older. It's got some of the some of the plating has kind of worn in some spots, some scratches. The upper ring here, um, he had a much more professional repair, but in shipping, he, he packed this thing immaculately, okay? You can't blame him. But it got handled very badly. The block box was split in the corner, and it was of, of enough force that it create, caused that part of the hook to break, and so I had to more or less super glue it in place. In his um, defense as well. He also offered to give me advice how to repair it or B, send it back to him for him to fix. So if you look for this guy, he's on eBay. He has a YouTube channel where he showcases things he has for sale. You can probably trust the purchase. So today we're going to listen to this as one option. This is going to be the hard option for having an old sound because you're going to have to work with the hiss and then you're going to have to somehow make it work. Right, which is going to be finding one of these and a power supply. It's going to be really expensive or it's going to be impossible. But you're going to be participating in something where there's no videos on these, really, except for from this fellow. Um, 
but don't judge it too hardly because of that hiss. I don't have the equipment with low pass filters and other things to drop that down. So we're going to take a peek of listening to this recording. All right, here's the power supply. Here's the quarter inch plug that goes to the mic. And this is some nice cabling and plugs that this fellow used. He really didn't cheap out much on anything. So that just plugs into the side. And, okay, well, what? there we go. Was able to do one handed. And then the XLR cable. Whoop. This guy has a latching system. That plugs into the other side. And you can see there. And let's see if I can one hand it too. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, two hands. All right, so now that's all plugged in, we're going to record, right? Well, not yet. What is it plugged into? We have to go over to the computer. So the cable snakes on around and then makes its way into this. The Behringer uh, Tube Ultra Gain Mic 100. It's a very inexpensive uh, tube preamplifier because that the sound coming from that needs to get a little bit of a boost before it's um, at a level you can really hear well. You'll notice that I have it set for the tube, the gain side, up fairly high. This is about as high as this unit goes before it actually starts being noisy itself, introducing hiss and whatnot. And the output side fairly low. Um, this tends to create a, a sound that is, is amplified, you know, plenty, plenty good. Um, doesn't have too much really additional noise to it. And should be working that little tube in there about as hard as it can. Now, the thing with these little cheap, cheap tube preamplifiers, because the guys who know what they're talking about will probably crucify me if I don't mention it, they're very low voltage. They're not really high powered units. Tubes traditionally um, are in high voltage applications. And so when there's such little power trickling through them, even with the setting all the way up high, you're not really adding a whole lot of that tube warmth, that, that type of distortion that's pleasing to the ear that tubes tend to add. Um, it's not being worked hard enough to really do that. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're using these units. They're not gonna make it super, super warm. Though, this isn't a bad unit, it has a nice effect, but it's pretty clean overall, I think. In the back, you get a XLR cable in, which is from coming from that power supply unit for the microphone. And then on the other side, it just goes out. So the back side is pretty plain. It's just two XLR plugs or two um, quarter inch jack plugs. Nothing much to look at. There are reviews on this unit, which you can um, find yourself. It has a few features which aren't useful for what we're doing right now. Then that goes, that XLR cable from this unit goes to the back of the computer and is converted from XLR to RCA red and white. So that to two RCA cable standards. So it loses that ground, so it becomes unbalanced. That goes in the back of my Sound Blaster ZXR and then will be recorded using the built-in smart recorder software. Is it the best? No. Does it get the job done? Yeah, pretty much. We're also doing it at night at uh, 96,000 hertz at 24-bit uh, recording. So that's how we're doing it. So stand by. We're going to get this thing fired up. So the first thing you do is with the current control set down to zero, you're going to power on the unit, which then gives you your power light. All right. And then we're going to slowly turn the dial up. On this particular um, microphone, you don't want to go above 10 milliamps, ideally. So we're going to just start inching it on up, nice and slow. We'll see when those needles start to move a little bit. They've already started to inch up. The numbers on the dial are a dial that I'm turning are arbitrary. They're just more like guide points. Now you notice that one of the needles is moving up more and more aggressively than the other. That's because each button is its own thing. So now what you want is for these to be pretty close. They don't have to be identical. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to 
try to unpack the carb and get it ready to go. The uh, refurbishers always said when, when you need to do that, um, you know, turn it up with some fairly high, high power, which is kind of what we're at, and then you want to do a lot of loud noise into the microphone. So I'm going to need this guy. I'm not going to make you listen to it, but just know that I'm putting this right up to the microphone and more or less making loud and noises into it. And then we'll see if this changes. All right, after doing a bunch of that, they are closer together and they'll continue to adjust a little bit up and down. So now we're right about the good recording level. I think about seven milliamps is good for this microphone. So now we're going to switch to recording from it. And I'll see if I can sync the audio, but I might just do, end up doing a still image. And the pillow fort, as you saw, is to try to isolate sound coming from the computer because um, you know, these microphones, they'll pick it up. Anywho, let's see what it sounds like. All right, hopefully the audio is synced. We'll find out. Anyway, first thing I need you to do is to just get used to the hiss. Just embrace it, become one with the hiss, begin to breathe the hiss, and then begin to forget the hiss. Now, I don't possess the proper equipment to really get rid of that in a very natural way. I may do a section of this audio, run it through Audacity to remove the hiss afterwards just so you can hear the difference. But you could, if you had the proper, like an audio interface and a preamplifier made with a low pass filter, um, you could probably wipe a lot of this out. So don't blame the microphone or the restoration or anything like that. Um, it's just a matter of, I don't have the right equipment. Now, um, just listen to the sound quality. I think um, when you listen past the hiss, it actually sounds pretty good considering its age, especially for the human voice. Um, it also has a fun fat feature of if you tap the ring, you can like, hear it uh, echo and uh, reverberate through the mic, which is fun. But yes, this is a very classic sounding microphone, and it's good for someone who's trying to do some retro radio thing, maybe add some flavor to, I don't know, maybe the background singers and music or something. There's a, there's a company, um, I don't remember what they're called, but they're known for making something called the copper phone, where they make specialty mics, use, some use carbon elements, some use other ones, that do basically what this microphone is doing. Sound old. And people will use that in artistic ways and music and, you know, things like that. Another great thing about this mic is it really makes you want to whip out that mid-Atlantic accent. That old accent that used to be in uh, the United States and classic Hollywood, generally before, I think before World War II is when it started to phase its way out. So you may think of, say, a classic story to explain why people don't wear hats anymore. Men and women, everyone used to wear hats back in the day. Well, what happened? Hey there, Timmy. How'd your date with Sally go last night? Oh, hi, David. It went swell. We even shared a hat. Oh, hot diggity. Yes, but this morning my head's itchy. I don't think she has shared a hat with only me before. I think she's been sharing hats with all the boys around town. What a harlot. Things like that. So, maybe you're thinking to yourself, you know, there's a lot of hiss there. Maybe the fidelity isn't quite to where you want it. Maybe it's just the prospect of being able to find one of these for a, a good price that's functioning with the power supply and all that stuff. Maybe that's just too, you know not going to work out for you because it's hard to find, quite frankly. The only reason I jumped on this is because I figured the likelihood of me finding another opportunity to have one of these and one that I can use is fairly low. So what are some other options for having an old-fashioned sound? Well, let me show you because there's actually some fairly inexpensive ways to do it. All right, so the carbon microphone isn't going to do it for you, for whatever reason. Um, too much, uh, there's the hiss you got to work with, price, um, at least the price they're normally at, um, trying to find them, that, that sort of thing. What option do you have? Well, one option is this, and you've already heard this, believe it or not. And if you are a regular viewer of my videos, you've heard this before. 
and just look at that. Isn't that great? The Silver Eagle. This is an A-Static D104, a very classic uh, CB and ham radio desk microphone. This is the uh, one of the later models that ended up having the Silver Eagle on it. has a little scratch there. But they, gosh darn it, they are they are, are pretty, aren't they? And they originally did use a carbon element, probably a single button. Eventually they moved to a crystal element. Now this one I'm not going to showcase today because the cable is all but rotten and hard and so it's developed some um, abnormal hiss and sound qualities that it didn't have before. But if you've heard in a couple of my old videos, and I'm going to dig up some of the audio files and probably put them in this video, uh, where there was an intro that said, previously on rapidly aging technology. That was done on this guy. It doesn't have the hiss, and it has a more of a... The carbon microphone seems to have more, almost more range to it. There's more fullness, even though there's some harshness to it that tends to come out. Um, this one, it's more, it's more of a subdued sound, but it still feels old and uh, like the, the dynamic range is limited. It has that old sound to it, which might be what you're going for. But they'll normally come with some sort of um, goofy connector meant for CB or ham radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I keep bumping the camera. Well, what do you do? Well, if it's using the standard uh, Cobra Uniden four pin connector and it's wired the same way, Gemtronics used the same connector, but with the wires more or less rotated. Um, so you couldn't actually, so the connectors would fit in identically, but wouldn't work, right? If you had the most common, which would be Cobra Uniden, this little, little plug here, then you can adapt it. So first, you get a, uh, well, this would be the male Cobra unit in four pin to quarter inch jack adapter. Excuse me. And I got this on, on eBay. It was really gosh darn cheap. Okay, so you've converted it into this. And that might be useful. Maybe it won't, depending on your setup. If you need to turn it into XLR, you get a quarter inch jack to XLR male adapter. And then you'll be able to plug this into your system. And then you'll be able to use this microphone. Now, since this is a communications mic for CB ham radio, it has, you have to hold down a button to use it. Or you can use the, the, the hold feature of this. This is a very old fashioned design. You can't really see what I'm doing here. There's this little bar down there. Move this up, it holds it on. It's really neat. And these, you can frequently find them for probably less than $100. They'll often be working or good enough. This one needs some work on it. Okay. So this is the head. That is its internal connector, which is a little wobbly in there. And that's the connector into the base. And the bottom, there is, well, this one's kind of worn out, but there's a, an adjustment for more of its gain, and it has a 9-volt battery in here. Nothing much to look at. The wiring is old. So this is a good option. Here's some... I'll put in some sound um, captures of this in here. But let's say you're not looking for something that's old and uh, has that limited old classic sound. You want something with more of a smooth classic sound. Well, I do have a microphone for that too. Previously on the Rapidly Aging Technology. Breaking news, Rapidly Aging Technology was wrong. It was wrong from the very beginning. He thought this computer used an Intel chipset, the 975 Express. He was wrong. And now to today. Now, if you're going for some classic sound on a modern microphone, because you can get modern microphones for this, you might want to try maybe a ribbon microphone. This is an MXLR144. 
This is maybe a $100 microphone. It's a ribbon microphone. So it has, in underneath this basket and whatnot, a small corrugated crinkly ribbon um, suspended between magnets. And when you speak, it vibrates and it creates an electrical field and that's translated out the bottom to the, um, your system. And the way these are also, because of their design, sound can be captured from the front and from the back. It's figure of eight is what it's classified as. That carbon microphone would be more cardioid or heart shaped where there's a lot of, if, we're, if, this, if it's the microphone looking and the front is down, um, out the front you're going to get the most but around the back, it's not going to pick up a whole lot. This would be figure of eight, and it even has an eight on the, on the front of it, just to remind you. Now, ribbon microphones have been around a long time. They're a pretty old design. Um, there's some classic microphones, like the um, RCA44 and the RCA77, um, I believe. When you see a microphone icon on a computer or a case or something where there's kind of a little stand with a little like pill shaped thing in the middle. That's that RCA 77. It's a very classic design and the sound is a very, it's, it's, it's a different sound. It's kind of a smooth, um, can be rich and full. Um, these are kind of like just platitude words, but they can sound very nice. So let's listen to this one. Oh, ribbon microphones are very fragile. So you want to handle them gently. And when you're using them, you want to probably use a pop filter, which I'll show you. I'll hook it on to make it so that the um, plosives, so the, the blowing into the microphone gets stopped so it doesn't actually agitate that ribbon too much because if it breaks, then you got to do all sorts of nonsense. So I'll hook, put that in a stand and we'll play around. We'll listen to what that sounds like. You heard it before if you've heard my channel update with warships, uh, but we'll, we'll play around with it again. I almost forgot to mention, ribbon microphones are very quiet. They don't have a lot of gain to them, which means you have to do, you know, you have to boost it a lot. You have to put a lot of work into it. And if you do that, if your system isn't the best, it's going to sound noisy because the amp preamplifier and whatnot is going to add a bunch of sound to it. That's not good. So how do you use these microphones, get some decent volume out of them, um, and not add too much extra noise? You can use something like this. This is a cloud lifter. It's a, essentially you can think of it as a pre preamplifier and it uses something called phantom power, which I mentioned. Um, 48 volt phantom power is used to power, I think condenser mics, but it can be damaging to ribbon microphones. So you don't use phantom power with a ribbon mic. However, if you're using this, the phantom power powers this thing, but doesn't, doesn't translate onto the microphone. So it's safe to use. This will give it um, 25 decibels of gain. It's just going to bump its level right, right up that, that amount so that it's to usable levels. Uh, one note about volume is for some reason, every recording I make, it might be the way that PCs um, and Windows and, and Apple software, um, you know, Mac OS, see sound. Um, I think their sound files are configured uh, a bit differently. Even recordings that I make on the Windows machine that are perfectly loud, right, they sound just fine. They're very quiet when I put them into the, my editing software, um, Final Cut Pro 6. So I always have to boost them up quite a bit. So if you notice that some of the mic recordings are a bit weak, you know, volume wise, that's more of that than it is the microphone. So keep that in mind. But we're going to hook this up in the link between the mic and the preamplifier, and then we'll be good to go. So as you can see, the microphone here has this pop filter on it, which is more or less just a little screen, a double screen of this soft fabric so that um, sound goes through, but more or less any wind, any blowing won't just hit straight onto the microphone. It's also not very pretty um, anymore with this covering it up. Which is a shame because this is a nice looking microphone and not really all that expensive. I keep bumping the microphone. I, mean, I keep bumping the camera with my leg. Anyway, as you'll notice that this it has a probably richer sound than the other two microphones, a richer sound than the little lavalier that I use. Um, 
it's a great sounding mic, I think, especially for only being $100, um, which is much cheaper than most of a lot of the smartphones out there. It does a, a decent job. This has more of a, I don't know, think of, makes me think about more of a crooner kind of sound. The old singers, maybe Sinatra um, and earlier ones, which would have actually probably had a lot of their work done even with carbon microphones. Um, I can tell this is starting to shift down out of the way. It's a fairly cheap one, and it's uh, it's kind of hard to configure, right? But this is what a ribbon microphone sounds like. There's a lot more richness, and there's something called proximity effect. So if you get closer... and you talk closer into it, the bass notes tend to be uh, accentuated. And the closer I get, the more and more that's the case. Um, and then, of course, you can also modify your voice to bring out the lower manly timbre, and you'll get all sorts of sound effects. Well, not really sound effects, but you know what I mean. You can adjust the way your voice sounds. Just by getting closer, it increases the that, that, that sound of the bass. With these microphones, having some a backdrop, like the, the goofy pillows I have here, is a little more important because if there's any echo from the other side of the microphone or other sounds, it's going to be picked up. So for these, it's uh, the sound environment is even more important than, say, the other two. But it's just something to keep in mind. Um, so yes, this is a nice, uh, a nice sounding microphone, good for older, smoother sounds. And I think uh, most folks would jump for this um, before the other two because of the quality and because it is a newly manufactured item. You're not having to use goofy adapters, um, and if you have nice enough equipment, um, you won't even need something like a cloud lifter, but it's nice to have. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting for you. Uh, I hope that... It maybe it'll inspire you to, if you want, to play around with recording, to maybe get into it. The thing that actually prompted me to kind of go down this road a little bit was uh, a video. Now, he's been criticized because he, he more or less copied it from someone else. And I'll put the original down below. But a fellow known as Ouija, Ouija Plays, he's a kind of a gaming channel. He has a nice voice and he does comedy stuff. He more or less copied someone else's video talking about recording. Um, and more or less railing against the uh, blue yeti, yeah, the blue yeti, um, because it's a you know it's a pretty cheap USB microphone overall. Well, I mean it's a hundred bucks or so, but um, more or less railing against that, saying that's not the end all be all, all of recording, and you should try to look branching out to other things. Of course, it sounds the way he does it, it sounds pretty elitist, you know. You're using a $100 item. No, you can't do that. You need to have $1,000 worth of equipment sound, you know, better. $1,000 more better. More better. More better. Mo better. Hmm. Maybe not. But it, I, it, I still found it interesting enough that there was these different kind of microphones. You could set them up. So I went down that route a little bit. Um, of course, I'm still using from fairly cheap equipment, and I don't have a real audio interface. I'm just going straight into the sound card, which does a great job for what it is. Um, a really great job recording. It just doesn't have all those goofy settings. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this um, visually fairly plain video, but maybe auditorially stimulating. I I don't I don't even know. I don't know. Anyway, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm hoping this is Saturday, Saturday the fourth, that I'm doing this. It takes me a while to render and upload. I'm hoping Sunday to not only just be editing this video, but also filming some other stuff, because I've been neglecting you folks. Also, I've just been neglectful. I've been a, I've been a bad, bad man. Anyway, like, subscribe. Um, leave your comments down below. Did you like those older microphones? The sounds that came from them? Did you would, you, would you be willing to try to fight to make them work well? Would you just go for this? Are you just fine with, you know, whatever the cheapest thing you can get? I don't know. Um, leave a comment down below, and I will see you later. Don't forget to join the Retro Machines group on Facebook. They mainly focus on old computers. I do mainly old computers and then some other stuff. They're pretty much all old computers. But join on in. We're all there. And I hope you have a great day. 
and I will see you around the channel. Bye. I'm a bad man! <laughs>